I'm Tony, and I have progressive supranuclear palsy. Follow me on my journey. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, many of you already know that my wife and caregiver, uh, Barbara, has decided to take a, a break and a diminished role in the production of these videos. This, uh, a couple with a large decline that I have experienced, experienced has led to a large gap in the video production. A few weeks ago, I had a pretty good headache in the upper right of my head, and not in the temples where you normally get headaches, but in the upper right. Uh, I we didn't find a cause. Uh, and in my life, as far as I can tell, I never had a migraine, uh, and I don't get very many headaches. Uh, on a pain scale, uh, this headache was an 8 out of 10, it was so intense. Uh, I was, uh, Barbara was in the room at the time when it occurred and as a matter of fact I was looking at her and I I couldn't talk or say anything for a few minutes it was so painful uh, but it died down uh, to around a three or a four uh, without taking anything and then a one or a two after taking Tylenol or, which is what I generally take but that was a few weeks ago, and this headache still continues to this day. It's not it's just in the upper right. It's actually all over now. Uh, uh, my doc believes it's PSP related, as some of us warriors can't have headaches as a symptom. Oh, joy, right? Uh-huh. Uh, but it's not that bad when I take the Tylenol and I only take about three capsules a day. Uh, anyway, one the thing that occurred with the headache uh, that I have noted is a uh, decline in my word finding and a more reduced thinking speed that even I recognize in myself, I can see that. Barbara says that she has seen me more unsteady for the little bit of wall surf walking that I do. She's also uh, noted that my movements have had a drastic uh, slowdown as well. Uh, she, I don't know if I have seen it, but she says that I appear to be having more trouble with swallowing and phlegm. Uh, I am drinking pineapple juice more often every other day instead of every two days. Uh, also, I, also, Barbara said that I've been having what she perceives as forgetting things in a moment, which we know is uh, uh, just a slant, lengthy, slow access 
is to the memories. Well, with that bit of uh, news out of the way, let's move on to the promised respite care topic for today. Uh, just a quick note before we get started. Another quick note, right? Uh, I'll be using my normal voice volume uh, for his video today. Uh, it saves me energy, uh, uh, but uh, also I'm not uh, forcing my voice to be louder. Uh, this is how it is. I will adjust the volume in the editing, but uh, if I, especially if I can't hear it, right? Uh, but uh, this will be it for uh, the rest of the talk. So, why is respite care? Well, the word respite basically means rest. Uh, respite is really meant to provide a temporary relief for the caregiver. Caregiver's job is hard. And it's intended for the caregiver to take a much needed break from the demands of being a caregiver. Respite care can take place in your own home. Somebody watches the patient for a couple hours. Maybe you can get some rest or go do some shopping or whatever needs to be done. Pull weeds in the yard. <laughs> my wife has to do that. She pulls the weeds. And she does that when my granddaughter's here. But lately, they've both been pulling weeds to make a quick meal of it. And I just sit in the bed. So I don't fall. <laughs> uh, anyway, respite can also take place uh, by your patient going to adult daycare centers uh, where there's activities and other adults to talk to. And it can also be, respite can also be at a residential or nursing facilities that offer overnight stays with care, uh, which is what we had in our recent respite. Whether it's for just a few hours, a week, or an extended vacation, Respite care can help ease that burden of the of family uh, caregiving. Well, and it helps relieve stress and restore your energy. It can also aid in prevention of you becoming exhausted. Uh, it helps relieve the feeling of isolation that you're the only one there and it will uh, even help prevent you from uh, feeling burned out you know from my perspective though respite care is intended for the rest of the caregiver for the caregiver respite care can benefit the person you're caring for by providing variety, uh, different stimulation, and even a change of, of just the routine. It can help keep our minds active. So 
what are the types of respite care? Well, respite care can be taught of, of basically two types. Well, is sharing the responsibilities for caregiving and getting support for yourself as the caregiver. Respite you know, could take a form of having friends and family watch your warrior so you can take a break to visit others, to go shopping, or to handle chores. Or respite care uh, can mean you finding volunteers or paid carers uh, to provide yeah, home services uh, for your loved one, either occasionally or on a regular basis. Respite care can also mean using out of home programs such as the adult daycare that I mentioned. Uh, nursing homes uh, and such and that provides you with a break and your loved one with a continued uh, care that they need so uh, as with everything there may be obstacles uh, to you having respite care that you need to address first. And what are some of those uh, obstacles? Now, this isn't a comprehensive list. This is only uh, my wife, Barbara, and I. This is our from our talks with each other uh, when we first started discussing that respite may be needed back in 2019 after my diagnosis. That was for the future. We just didn't know it would happen in just this past July. Okay, so the obstacles uh, is to having respite care. Well, it may seem obvious to friends and family, and maybe even yourself, that you desperately need a break from the physical and emotional demands of caregiving, which we know is uh, huge. Uh, actually, seeking help is not always easy, but necessary. When you're the primary and long-term caregiver, handing over responsibilities uh, for your warrior's care can seem very scary. Uh, can we afford the expense of outside care? What will I forget to tell someone about the level of care needed? Will taking the time off create more problems when I return? Should I just tough it out and do everything myself? It would be easier. But we talked about the burnout. And is it wrong for me to feel tired of caring for someone I love? What if the person taking over won't do as good a job? at meeting their care needs as what I do. And conversely, maybe deep down inside, I'm worried that a respite carer will do a better job. And maybe I'll somehow feel inadequate and no longer needed. It's important to remember that respite care is part of the 
caregiving role. It's not just for you. It's also the person you're taking uh, care of and for the rest of your family. Uh, it's like we say, if you become hurt, ill, or anything else, how can you do a good job as a caregiver uh, for your warrior? So you need to take care of your needs first and then uh, the warrior. It's like uh, this flight assistant, whatever they want to call them. We used to call them stewardesses. Uh, but it's like they say on an airplane when they're demonstrating the oxygen mask. Put your mask on first and then help the other person with theirs. If you work theirs, you might not be able to put yours on. You might be out of oxygen or in this case, out of the picture. And well, none of us want that to happen. This uh, next segment is uh, going to be about our own experience with uh, one week respite care. Uh, I It's going to be uh, lengthy for me, so I will be Relying on notes once again. Uh, for our, uh, uh, this is set up for our own experience, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Barbara and I had already uh, talked about her needing a respite at uh, some point. Uh, we did this. Shortly after my diagnosis, uh, as a matter of fact, I think that that talk even came before we uh, finished out my advanced directives. Uh, we already had the thoughts in place about respite. Uh, when uh, my uh, own doctors uh, who were doing video conferencing and the uh, social workers at the Veterans Administration uh, suggested that uh, uh, Barbara uh, take some respite uh, time for herself. They arranged everything for us uh, where we were going to stay. We had a few choices uh, uh, which as you know I had difficulty with but uh, but we uh, chose that. I would be staying at a care center for seven nights. Uh, and uh, Barb would be recharging her batteries while staying at home. She wasn't planning on going anywhere. Rather than come on the camera, as we know it, Barbara shared her experiences with me for this video. During her time at home, she visited some friends local to us. Uh, she cleaned and rearranged the furniture in the house. Uh, she ate when she wanted and what she wanted. Uh, she slept when she wanted and generally just tried to relax. She didn't spend uh, time doing a lot of home any needs like the gardening or anything else like that. I might have done it, but she didn't. Uh, those were accomplished. She did all those things. But it didn't stop her from caring about what was happening to me while I was away. She woke up each morning went to bed each evening with me 
and my care on her mind. We texted good morning to each other and we uh, texted uh, good night and all. Uh, and we had a few texts during the day in between just to check up on each other. Actually, her to check up on me. Uh, uh, so, respite didn't take away that caregiving mindset, but it did uh, take away the physical aspects. No longer did she have to help me in and out of the shower, uh, help me get dressed, dried off, and all the rest of that. She didn't have to worry about getting me fed. Uh, she didn't have to think, well, I know she did think about it, but she didn't have to physically uh, help if I had fallen or or anything else like that. So, in that respect, she did get a rest. Uh, yeah, but it was only the physical aspect. We've had a couple of day and overnight respite opportunities with my 18-year-old granddaughter staying with me to provide the care. At first, Barbara was just as apprehensive about leaving me in my uh, granddaughter's hands as she was about the care center. But as this has continued a few more times, she has felt more relaxed with my uh, granddaughter's care for me. When we only had one week with me in a care center, Barbara feels that uh, a few more stays with the same people would help her relax more. Uh, just as she has with my granddaughter. Now for me, the seven nights in the care center were more of a, a change of location rather than a change in my routine. Other than having to put my mind, or it was a change of routine, other than having to put my mind to deciding what I wanted for meals the next day, I had to fill out a little form for the next day. I spent my time doing the things I normally do. Uh, watching some shows and playing video games and, and the like. I did have one bad experience while in a care center, and this can seem scary and uh, daunting and lengthy when you hear it. First of all, let me start off by saying that the nurses and nurses' assistants that worked there were absolutely fantastic. I had uh, when I arrived, I had provided them with some pamphlets and some documents from Cure PSP. I also gave them a sheet that many of you have seen that I made about why the specific issues and how I don't know that word. Just a moment, folks. I'm trying to clear my mind. Okay. I had given them a sheet about my specific issues and how to respond. I ensured they read it. Uh, by offering them what one person noted was nurse bait or some chocolate and candy once they read my sheet about my needs. And before they got that candy, I quizzed them. I made sure that they did indeed read it uh, before they could take that candy. <laughs> that nurse bait worked pretty well. Only one had ever heard of PSP, 
and every single one of them were very interested in it and other neurodegenerative diseases as they didn't receive uh, patients with neurodegenerative diseases very often. Where I stayed was more of a rehabilitation center uh, with physical and stroke kind of rehabilitation. However, my bad experience wasn't centered around the fantastic nursing staff. It was centered around a third party a lab assistant that came to draw blood unannounced at 5.30 in the morning on my second morning. I didn't know they were going to be doing that. I was never informed. I had only fallen asleep at about 3 in the morning, as is my normal routine for sleeping, which is like 3 to 7, sometimes 2 to 2.30 to around 7. For some reason, 7, I tend to wake up 7 quarter after whatever. In spite of my notes on the door and at the nurse's station uh, saying to not uh, turn on the lights until I was prepared uh, due to my uh, light sensitivity, she came in and flipped on the lights first thing before she even announced herself. I asked her to turn off the lights while at the same time I was reaching for my sunglasses. Of course, my speaking and thinking are slowed, and I didn't get to the point of why I needed them off when she interrupted me with a raised voice and say that she needed the lights on to do her job. Well, as many of you have heard from my other videos, this set me off uh, with emotional liability and uh, something else that I recently noted. Uh, I tend to go to the anger supermarket, <laughs> you know, where you can pick and choose anger, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, so she set me off with that emotional uh, ability or the pseudo bar affect and a quick trip uh, to the anger supermarket. Uh, uh, because of the major note that was also on the door and at that nurse's station uh, saying that she needed to give me time to communicate, and she didn't do it. When I had finally composed myself, I still wasn't thinking clearly or fast enough, but I did ask if she bothered to read the notes on the door or at the nurse's station. Uh... She said she didn't work for the care center. It's the first I had heard who this person was. And she didn't work for the care center and never stops by a nurse's station. Then she told me there was no note on the door either. Now I'm sitting in this hospital bed and I can clearly see the door that she opened and the note is still there. The note was still there. So, more visits to the anger supermarket. Uh, evidently, my recipe wasn't done. After that subsided, you know, I told her I could see the note. After that subsided, she followed, apologized for not reading the notes and for the manner of her bursting in to draw the blood. Then this total stranger attempted to give me a hug and tell me that she knows that I will recover from this disease 
called PSP, and I just needed to try harder. I needed to try to recover from PSP. That was my final trip to the Anger Supermarket. But I know that she was well-meaning and not used to dealing with people with a life-limiting disease. It was a rehab facility. People were expected to get better and leave. So I kept that anger in my own sharp shopping basket at checkout. And I didn't share how insensitive it was. And she obviously had no idea what PSP was. But it wasn't a pleasant experience. By the way, she didn't get any chocolate or candy either. First, myself, immediately afterwards, as she was done, I got into my wheelchair and went to talk to the nurses. And later, the administrators, after they arrived. I did some research on the incident, because uh, Barbara uh, talked with him too. She called. Uh, they apologized to Barbara first for what had happened, but didn't get around to apologizing to me until well after lunch. Remember, I had been woke up at 5.30. It was only a couple hours of sleep. Uh, that day was supposed to be a, an outing uh, into the uh, courtyard area in preparation for Independence Day. Cause it was the 3rd of July, I think. Uh, so they were going to be serving lunch there, barbecues and stuff like that. But after that incident, even though I said I wanted to go, I didn't feel like going, and so I just had lunch quietly in my own room. Sometimes people don't know that what they say or do affects other people uh, so deeply. But as I said, the actual staff was fantastic, and I couldn't have been happier. And I... It definitely felt well cared for. My experiences with my granddaughter uh, have also been fantastic. And she has come to know how PSP affects me. And she knows that I'm still in here. Especially when I make her laugh. <laughs> uh, I didn't talk about the bad experience here. Because... Uh, uh, I wanted to turn you off to your own respite. Uh, by no means, that is not what I meant. That uh, one incident is so that you know uh, for yourself as the caregiver, no matter uh, the planning, the time taken to try to ensure things go smoothly and well so you can get that rest, people will still be people. Unless safety is the issue involved, like not being there, constantly falling or whatever. Unless safety is the issue involved, just acknowledge uh, the issue, remedy the situation, and move on. Uh, yeah, you're going to have some lingering doubts and, and anger and stuff. But if it's not a safety problem, by all means, move on. Uh, focus on the bad things that will inevitably, I remember that word, <laughs> happen, will lessen your respite experience. But it can also create a reluctance to try it again in the future. And don't let that happen to you. Safety wasn't involved with this. Uh, so we remedied it and moved on. That was the second day. 
The rest of the days were absolutely fantastic. Even the surrounding neighborhoods accommodated us by not having too many fireworks on the 4th of July uh, after about 11 at night. <laughs> that pretty much died down, which was very good and not the norm where we used to live. <laughs> uh, so it still turned out to be uh, an overall good experience. So don't let a bad experience create that reluctance to try it again. After all, seeking support and maintaining your own health are key to managing your role as a caregiver. It's not selfish to need time to yourself. The next video <clears throat> that we have will be about the sensory overload. And I hope to create a video experience within it so that you can see what going through the sensory overload looks like and feels like to me. I have the ideas in my head uh, for that video inclusion within the video. So please subscribe to the channel uh, to be notified of that next video. And as always, until next time, remember to keep making memories.